front hub for the Victorian tricycle and we're off to a flying start. I lost the footage of me machining up the two discs and clamping them together to form the front hub. But as you can see here, it was a straightforward job. Keep everything in alignment and bolt them together so that they don't distort while being welded. Um, each disc has to be divided into 14 segments, 28 spokes in all. So I used the same trick I used on the rim. I divided the circle on the computer, cut out a disc, and then stuck it onto the face of the hub disc. This first disc can be placed anywhere in relation to the the face. So a little bit of, um, I think I call it Pritt stick glue, just to get everything in place. And the disc is secured in position. This just laziness on my part, so I don't have to put it in a dividing head, set up the milling machine and get everything loaded up and ready to go. Also, not everybody has a milling machine and a dividing head. This just is an alternative to the way to do it. Anyway, the disc is now in place. The blue is put on the edge of the disc. Just a final adjustment there. And then the lines are transferred onto the edge of the disc using a little square. Fiddly but straightforward enough. With them all transferred across I can centre punch each mark slightly off centre of the flange so that when it's drilled the spoke can be put in at an angle, if that makes sense. Anyway this is the setup for for drilling the spokes, spoke holes. The angle plate is tipped up at a degree to match the angle of the spoke meeting the centre of the rim. Um, the centre drill is to start each hole on the dot, shall we say, and the spindle, is that a good word for it, bobbin, is held in place so it just requires turning to achieve the same result for each hole. A bit of patience and time and you can get this quite accurate. These holes are then tapped 5mm for the spoke adjustment nipples. On this particular Victorian tricycle they're done at the hub not like modern bikes out at the real rim. Bit fiddly to get going but the tap self locates and goes in at the right angle. The opposing disc of course is drilled with the holes half a division out of sync with the first set. 
here I'm um, assembling the hub it's nowhere near finished it's just to make sure I've got everything right and everything lines up the hub is bolted to the center of the jig the spoke nipples are screwed into place and the spokes are threaded through the rim to locate in the hub again just checking everything making sure everything looks okay and I haven't messed up the spacing in any way just centering up the wheel again just checking doesn't hurt to find out now if there's any problems be a lot better than if you left it until later and had to go back and correct a whole lot of work as with most things in restorations it just takes your time this is me making up the riveting block the riveting over the heads of the spokes it's two blocks of steel they should be clamped together and a hole drilled slightly smaller than the spoke diameter so that it's clamped when they're pinched hopefully tight enough to rivet over the head I'm using a 2.2 drill for a 2.3 spoke still of course have to machine the hub out to fit bearing cups and enough clearance to get an axle through This is an experimental one just to see how it all goes. I've clamped the spoke in place, created a very small riveting, riveted head so that uh, when I screw the adjustment nipple in it's not interfered with. And it seems that the clamping force is sufficient to create the rivet head anyway. So on the whole things are going okay. I've only got 26 more to do and if that was all that wouldn't be too bad but I've got to do the other ends when I get them into the room. Just tapping it home make sure everything's okay. There we are. One end done. Not the best of pictures. look in the park. Anyway that's it for now. Thanks for watching.